we are going to talk about this allowance problem. So in algebra class and I were discussing allowance. Student A gets an allowance of $5 a week, or student B got a penny for the first week, and the allowance continued to double each week. If you had to choose, which would you choose? Would you want $5 a week or a penny a week that doubles each week? Well, it's a great question. Um, I know a lot of you are saying $5 a week. I don't want a penny. So let's just talk about how that's going. Okay, so we've got this right here where we're kind of starting. And if you look, it's not great to begin with. We've got $5, gives us $5, 15, you know, five seems like the good answer. So let's just, we know that each of these right here, if I make a little text box and I go down, I'm getting five, five, five each week. And it keeps going and going and going, okay? But this part changes. So I know I'm increasing by five each week, but this is a little bit different. This goes from five to 10 to 15 to 20, 25, 30, 35. This is looking pretty good. 40, scroll down here. And we're going 45, 50, 55. We got $60. $60 sounds good right now. 65, 70, 75, and 80. Okay. Let's figure what this is when we get a penny doubling each, each time. So first we're gonna figure out the doubling part, how much that is increasing, and then we'll figure out the total. So we go from one penny to two penny to four pennies, to eight, to 16, to 32 cents, still doesn't seem great, to 64 cents, to uh, one twenty-eight to $2.56. Again, we're not even at $5 yet, which is what the other one's getting. So let's keep going. If you notice, it is going up. So $2.56, we get five twelve. Now that's how much we're making, we're making now more per week than the $5 a week one, this doubling one, 10.24, 20, 48, 40, oops, $40 and 96 cents, $81 and 92 cents. I'm getting $81.92 a week. That's a lot of money. 15, I'm getting 160, because we have to double it each time. So $163 and 84 cents each week. And on the 16th week here, I am making 300 and $27 and 68 cents a week. So let's figure out how much total this is. Okay, so on week three, I'm only getting, I only have a total of seven cents. But on week four, I've got 15 cents. Five is 31. Six is 63 cents. Again, not great. Seven is $1.27. Eight is two fifty-five. Oop, let's move this up a little bit. Two fifty-five. Nine is five dollars and eleven cents. Ten is ten twenty-three. But then eleven is twenty forty-seven. Twenty dollars and forty-seven cents. Scroll down. Okay, and week 12, I have a total of $40.95. Still the other one, I at week 12, I have $60. 13, I have $81.91. I have just passed the other one, so by week 13. Week 14, I have $163.80. 
83 cents. By week 15, I have $327 and 67 cents. And by week 16, I have $655.35. So this is going up quite a bit. By week 13, I wish I had done a dollar one. I'm not going to graph it right here. I'll graph it in class. But just going to answer some of these questions. After how many weeks did student A and B have the same amount of money? It looks like it was around... 12.5 weeks. How many weeks was student B getting a larger allowance than week A? So how many weeks it would be, if we're doing 16 weeks, it would be one, two, three, four. Oh, how much was the allowance, a larger allowance? So that's more than $5, one, two, three, four, five, six, six weeks. Write an equation that relates student A allowance and numbers. So this would be Y equals 5X. I would choose doubling, starting with a penny. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I would do. Okay, I am gonna delete this stuff so it doesn't show up because I am gonna go over some of this in class with you guys. I'm gonna delete all this. Sorry, it's taking a minute, but I want to make sure it's all done. Okay, so we're gonna look at some other ones here of exponential growth. All right. So linear functions, we're going to put right here, linear functions have a constant slope. Exponential, which is what we're working with, do not. So we're going to look at these different equations. So this is at negative 2 or at negative 4, negative 1, 2, 5, 8. And so we're just trying to figure out what the slope is here. So I'm going to go 8 minus 5 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 1, so I'm going to get a slope of 3. I know the y-intercept is when um, x is 0, y is 2. So I know this is looking like y equals 3x plus 2. We're over here, I'm looking here. Now I can find the base when x is zero again. It is two. Now the y-intercept is also two. So this is going to be y equals, and we're looking at a, b, to the x, where it is around here. Okay, so if I was gonna plot these points, I'm just gonna double check that my base and y-intercept are the same. At negative two, I'm at two ninths, so I'm like here-ish. At negative one, I'm at two thirds. Okay, still not up here. At zero, I'm at two, okay, okay. At one, I'm at six. And at 2, I'm at 18. I'm not even on here anymore. I'm way up there. So I'm just going like this, okay, which is an exponential function. And so if I'm at 2 to the 0, that's going to give me 1. So am I 2, 2 to the x? I don't know. I have to try these out. I'm going to plug these numbers in. If I go 1, 2 to the 1 is 2. That gives me 6. So maybe this is 3. Let's see. 2 to the 1 is 2. And then 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4. But 4 times 3 is 12. So that's not going to work. Let's try it the other way. 
What if I put a three in here? This is just like kind of a guess and check because I'm trying to figure out, help you guys figure out what this is. So if I'm at three, three times one is three, three times two is six. So I'm using this number one to plug in. Three times two is six, but six times two is 12. So that doesn't work. So what am I going to do here? How am I going to figure this out? I know the y-intercept is two. What does it mean by the base? Maybe the base I have wrong. So we need to talk about um, exponential functions then and what the meaning is behind them. Like, where can I get this information from? So I am going to look, I'm oh, sorry that that popped up for you, at exponential functions at kind of the formula to kind of help me figure out what this is, okay? Uh, so I want a, b to the x. That's the formula I'm telling you where, where b has to be greater than zero and cannot equal one, okay? So from here, I have to do a little bit more looking into this. We have to look what each of these parts are. So let's do, let's stop here. And we'll come back in one second. So there'll be a second video that you can look at. 